Hi guys, my name is Lexi Saucedo, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to sing whistle tones. This is gonna be a more in-depth video, and hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will be able to sing whistle tones. Well, before I get into it, I just wanna encourage you guys that if you think that you can't sing whistle tones, maybe it's too high, I just wanna say that you can. You definitely can. If I can, you can. <laughs> So let's get into it. What is a whistle note? A whistle note is basically a note that is a C6 or higher. And what happens when you sing a whistle note is that your vocal folds become extremely thin and they start to vibrate at a much faster rate comparing to when you're singing in your chest voice. So who can sing and whistle? Honestly, anyone who has a voice both male and female can sing whistle notes. So that's pretty cool. So why do people sing whistle notes anyway? Like, is it necessary to become a good singer? Singing in whistle notes is not only fun, but it also gives us the opportunity to be more creative in our singing. And although, <laughs> going back to the second part of that question, is it necessary to to be able to be a good singer? The answer to this is no. But then there's also people who are like Mariah Carey and Ariana Grande, they're very well known for singing and whistle notes. But just the idea, just by itself singing and whistle does not necessarily make you a good singer or a bad singer. Yeah. What does it feel like? Singing whistle notes should feel relaxed. It really should. And I know that when I first started singing whistle tones, I used to think that you had to push for it. I'd always be like, <laughs> like that. But no, you, you don't want to do that. There should be no strain, no pushing. You shouldn't be forcing. It shouldn't hurt. There shouldn't be no pain. This whole list, it just, it should feel comfortable for you. And you should feel completely relaxed when you do this. It should feel light, almost delicate in a way to your voice because you're not coming like full force on your voice. You're just singing a little bit and there's a little bit of air that's escaping through your vocal folds when you sing and whistle. It should be effortless when you sing and whistle tones. The picture that I kind of have in mind when I sing whistle notes is almost like a violin, okay? And the bow of the violin is just gently rubbing against the string and it it's making a sound. That's kind of the picture that I have in my mind when I sing whistle, whistle tones. So I'm not too sure if that would help you, but that has definitely helped me as far as remember to be relaxed, not to be full force, to just go very lightly. It goes, your vocal folds rub very lightly together and fast. So you definitely don't want to slam them together because that's not going to help you. So how do you find the right placement for whistle tones? I have been told from my past voice teachers that doing it on a lip roll should help you to get in that whistle register and to kind of strengthen it. But honestly, that's never, never really worked for me. Mainly because I tend to kind of push up there in those higher notes when I do it on a lip roll. And that's not what I want to go for at all. Maybe for some, doing the lip roll has helped. But for me personally, no, it's, it's never worked. It's just never worked for my voice. Moving on, as I had experimented more with the whistle register, I came across what's called like the yawn technique where you just yawn and a whistle note would just come out, which has worked for me. Also doing the like the a crying puppy dog has worked as well just to be able to get the sound out. But as far as being able to do it consistently without having to do the yawn, I couldn't. The only time that I could sing a whistle note was if I yawned. I didn't want that to be the case when I was singing. <laughs> when it comes to doing the yawn, and the puppy dog cry, I like to think of those as like a, the training wheels for your voice, like to help you to get the sound out. But then once you're comfortable in that placement, then you can do it without it. 
before we get into singing and doing this together, I just wanted to make some key observations that I had made. It should feel very light for your voice. It shouldn't hurt. You shouldn't feel like you have to squeeze or push really hard to get at those high notes, these, these whistle notes. You shouldn't feel that at all. Your larynx should not be raised. You want your larynx to just stay in a neutral position as if you were singing any other note. As far as vocal fold resistance, you just want just a little bit, okay? <laughs> not too much. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the singing part. What we're gonna do is the yawn, we're gonna do the puppy dog, and then we're gonna get into whistling, okay? I promise you. So here we go, the yawn. What I want you to do is just yawn big, yawn tall. Just yawn. And just let it be big and open, okay? I promise you, just if you feel like you're not getting that on the first try, just continue to press at it as long as it doesn't hurt you, okay? If it starts to hurt, what I want you to do is stop, okay? And do some lip trills just on a descending five tone scale. <laughs> just as low as you can go, okay? And that will kind of help to rebalance your voice. After you feel like you have got that yawn down, what you can now do is the puppy dog. It's almost like an NG hum. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Just think of like a sad little puppy dog. And that will kind of help you to bring it a little more forward. So the yawn was to help to keep it tall and open and big, okay? But the puppy dog kind of helps to narrow everything and place it a little forward. So it feels a little more sustainable. Now let's get into whistling, okay? Now that we did the yawn, we did the puppy dog. What we're gonna now do is think of the NG hum, okay? and also an E vowel. So we're gonna kinda mesh those two together, okay? And that's how we're gonna sing our whistle tones. Starting at the A4 helped me as far as being aware of my transition, how I am slowly moving forward as I move throughout my head voice, and then my super head voice, and then whistle tones. So for the sake of time of this video, I'm just gonna start at a G5. You can kind of go ee, or if it helps to do the ng hum first you could do like that or you could do like that i personally like to do the ng hum first and then the e but it's really up to you it just helps you to get in that right placement So right there, we're already at a C6, okay? So we've already entered the whistle register. <laughs> so let's see how high we can go, okay? I, I don't know, honestly, but we'll see. We'll find out together. No, we're just gonna, yeah. I tried, that's the highest I could go. That was a, that was the E6. Hey, it was better than the last time though. Woo woo. <laughs> well, this concludes the end of my whistle tone video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more content on this, also vocal reactions, covers, and vocal tips. So if you are into that kind of thing, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I do wanna ask you, 
what is your goal as a singer? What is your goal as a singer? Is it to sing high notes, sing low notes, or maybe focus on blending things in between? What is your goal as a singer? I'm just curious to know more about you, to know more about your vocal journey that you were on and how I can best help you in the best way that I can. So please leave a comment of that down below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.